So you want to understand file and folder structures on your Mac? You've come to the right place. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. So what I wanted to do today is just go over some of the file and folder structures on the Mac. A lot of people that come from either Windows or even they've been using Mac for a super long time, they may have no clue what the file and folder structure is on a Mac and how it actually works. So what I'm going to show you today is just the basics. I'm going to go from the top down, show you how the file and folder structure works on a Mac, show you where all your file and folders usually get saved, um, and also show you, you know, the way you should really be saving files so you can find them later how your files you know, are different if you have multiple users on a Mac, how they show up on the Mac and where they get stored. And then finally, like how iCloud works and how your files get stored with that and how you can turn some settings on and off so that you can see things on multiple accounts. So without further ado, I hope this helps. It's gonna be a very basic tutorial. I do things basically on stuff like this, teaching, and I also do a lot of reviews of Mac products. Um, check out my channel, I have over 290 or 300 videos. And I do all videos like this, but this is more of a training tutorial one on how to do, how to learn the Mac OS structure. This isn't going to be everything. It's going to be a start for people, but it'll be a good start. And once you, you know, go through this whole video, I think you'll have a good understanding of how everything works on a Mac, at least how their structure is. It's pretty simple at the end of the day when you look at it. And uh, if you're a Windows user, like I said, it's going to help you out and it's going to help you kind of get into the Mac OS. And even people that are more, you know, been using Macs a long time, this could help with. So let me know what you think, and then we'll catch you at the back side of the video, and we'll uh, wrap it all up there. And uh, But right now I'm going to do a screen share, and uh, let's get into it. All right, the first thing I want you to do is just open up your Finder window down here. So go down to the bottom and click on Finder. It's going to open up a screen like this, and everyone's going to maybe have a little bit different screen here, but I'm going to show you what to do so we're all on the same page. The very first thing you want to do is you want to go up to go see it at the top here make sure you're on your finder window and then go to go and then go into computer see there that's going to be your top level so click on computer and then what i always recommend doing is see these little dots up here these little icons click on the third one over show item as icons and it's going to help you um, and then we can go through this a little bit easier so you can see that what what i have here is four different drives now you may have something different most people are going to have let me just explain so you're going to have your Macintosh HD, and that's usually going to be your main drive. Now, you may have changed the name of that, and if you have, that's going to be named something differently. But this is usually your main drive. If you have other external drives, you can see them in yellow here. I have an A-Data external drive hooked up, and that's like a, just an external SSD drive. You can t usually tell that because it's mounted. See this little mount thing here? Don't click on it because you'll unmount it. But it's mounted on your computer, so that means it's kind of just an external drive. Then you have a network here as far as a network uh, icon, and then mine's a little bit different, and that's what I wanted to show people, but yours is gonna be not like this, most likely. I boot off an external SSD drive, and since I boot off that external SSD drive, it thinks that this is my main drive also. So I really have two main drives on my computer. I have the Macintosh HD, and I have this one because I'm booting off of this. I'm booting off an external drive, so my OS and all my files are on that drive. In any case, for this example, what I want you to do is choose the drive that is your main drive. You know, in my case, it's this one, but in the case of many people, it's going to be this one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and then click on this little icon here, and it's going to open up some, you know, folders. And in Catalina, everyone should really have these four folders. All right, now that I've clicked on my main drive, and you should do the same, you should see these four folders. So just confirm you have these four folders. That's what we want, that's where we want to be. The first three are going to be things you really don't change or really shouldn't change. And let me go through what these are. The very first one's your applications. And what those are is, let me go ahead and click on that. These are going to be all of your applications. And so you might have multiple users on your Mac, but you only need, really need, you know, if you're sharing the same apps and stuff, you really only need the app on here once. So this is going to be at a higher level. So these are all the apps that you have saved. And you can get these from the App Store. You can download them you know, independently. But they're all going to show up in this folder here and you don't really change anything in this folder. You can look at it, but you can't change it. The next two actually, system and library, um, we'll, we'll go through those, but these are gonna be both read-only, and which means you can't change anything in library or system either. And the reason for that is because in case a virus gets in there, they don't want you you know, having that change files and core system files. So you can look in here, but again, you can't really change anything. Your library, you know, again, is gonna be, if you look in here, let's just go to audio, for example. 
if you click on that, it's going to have various things like Apple Loops from GarageBand and stuff. Now, you might actually, when you download a program, you might add loops, and they might show up in here. So this might be a little bit different for, for each person that's out there. But realistically, they're going to be very similar. And you can't really change these. It's just you can kind of go in here and look around. So I don't recommend even going in here unless you absolutely have to. So we're going to go ahead and close that down. The next one is system, and system is really all your system files. That's going to be like, you know, all, all the files that make up Mac OS, your OS files, and things you don't want to change either. Again, you can look at them, but you don't really want to change them. So, and you can't change them because they're read-only. So don't worry about these either. Um, we're going to get back. So system, you know, read-only, you don't have to worry about them. The only one in this whole list that really relates to you is going to be users. So go ahead and click on users. And if you see users, now over here what showed up is I have my personal account here with the little house next to it and then a shared folder. So I don't only, I only have one user on this Mac. If you had multiple users, they would all show up here, but the only, only the user that was logged in at this time would have the little house next to it. Since I'm logged in as myself, I have the house. If I had someone like my wife or someone in here, their name would be below mine and they would have a little folder, kind of a blue folder like this. You wouldn't be able to get in or change their stuff because you're not logged in as them, but you would see that they have an account. Since I don't have anyone in here, I only have myself, I'm just going to show you my account. So let's go ahead and click on this, and then I'm going to show you what this other shared folder means in a second. But let me show you. So this is going to be, the, you know, after this level, all of the data that, for me, Craig Nidell, all of my personal data is going to be stored underneath this little, you know, this little check here. So I'm going to click on it. Now here's where all my personal data is. If my wife was in here as well and I clicked on that, I wouldn't be able to get or change her data or see it, but all of her stuff, if she logged in, would be over here as well if she did the same thing. So that's where your personal data is. So let's keep moving, but I wanted to show you kind of what how this hierarchy works. And this is how you get into your personal data for the user. All right, so now I'm in my personal data. Again, I have the key because I've logged in with my password so I can see my files. So what I want to do is show you what all these folders mean. You probably won't have applications. I have that for a specific reason because I did something earlier. You might only have desktop through public, and I want to go through what those are. And that's most common what you're going to have. The very first one, desktop, if you click on this, go ahead and take a look at it. It's going to have a bunch of folders and files. If you notice, they're going to be a mirror image of what's on my desktop over here. See to the right? So if I add, if I created a folder here and I named it something, it would show up on my desktop. And so people, if you want to keep your desktop clean, you can remove things from here or move them into other locations. But this is going to be a mirror image of your desktop. I like to keep a couple folders out there, various things like that. Um, and uh, some people may want a perfectly clean desktop. That's, that's totally fine. But that's what that is. So those are all your desktop files. And if you go into like something like backgrounds, Double click on it, you're going to notice that all of these files are in here, and it's going to show you these are all pictures. It's the same folder right here with all the pictures in it, so nothing nothing groundbreaking there. Um, let's go back. Let's get out of here. Let's, so we're at desktop, so let's go back to now the next one is going to be documents. So with documents, um, that's usually whatever, you know, whenever you, you know, have a document, this is where you're supposed to be creating all of your main folders. You can see that mine is a little messy right now. Um, what I recommend doing though is in documents, create all of your major, you know, major folders that you want to save your documents and like basically tax documents and work documents. Create a folder for them. And that's where you should really be storing all of your personal information. Again, the other user that if they were available over here couldn't see that because it's under your account locked. So you would create all of your folders inside your documents, drag all your files into there, and then all of your folders should be neatly in here. With me, you can see that this is the Mac I create a lot of videos on, uh, and so I don't really have that kind of clean structure, but you should. So you should have folders in here that are meaningful and mean a lot to you, and then you can place all of your important files in there. Next one's gonna be downloads. And these are all your downloads. And the same thing, I tend to download something and I just keep it in here because this is my work computer where I actually just do videos only. But in other cases, you may actually want to, again, download something and then move it to your documents folder so it's cleaner and leave this blank. Or download something to look at it and then you can delete it. So that's one. That's the way I use downloads. But if you download anything from the web, it's going to go into this downloads folder unless you've changed the location of that to do something differently. So that's typically how that's going to work. Um, and that's pretty straightforward.
All right, the next one is gonna be movies. You can see it here in music, I'm sorry, movies, music, pictures, they're all very common. You kind of get the drift of this. So if I click on this one, under movies, you're gonna see a lot of times if you use uh, iMovie and stuff, your iMovie library will be in always in under this, usually this, this folder here. But I mean, also you can put in other folders. You can create folders in here if you're storing like, you know, just videos that you've created or different types of movies you wanna watch. You can create a folder in here, and just put it under movies. Of course, you can put it under downloads, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you can put it under documents. A lot of people maybe put their movies under documents, but realistically you wanna put them under movies if possible. So you just right click, click new folder, create the folder and then just drop them in here. Um, but your iMovie library is in here as well. So that's where what that is. Music's the same thing. You're gonna have some different things like GarageBand in here and stuff, but put your music in here. So if you have recordings that you wanna do and stuff like that, or if you've recorded audio, you can go ahead and create a folder, just click new folder, add them to your music. And the same thing with pictures. Again, you can have pictures. I don't store a lot in here just because of this is my work computer that I do kind of fast things with. But in perfect world, I would create folders in here, put all my pictures into different subcategories. Some people do it again. They have everything in documents. They don't want to deal with individualizing them between these three. But a lot of people do different things. But those are what those folders are. And then finally is the public folder here. And this is the one you have to be careful with. So the public means it can be seen by anybody. So again, remember if my wife had a, if she had a folder over here, if she had an account, I'm sorry, an account. If I put something in the public fold, in the public area here, over here, like in this Dropbox, she could see that as well. So that's going to be something that everyone can see. So it's public. So be careful there. Don't drop things in there that you don't want uh, other users to see. Otherwise, you're going to see those too. And that's what this folder is right here. So if you want something where you want to share a document with your family and what have you, and you have all multiple accounts over here, drop it over into this public area and everyone will be able to see it, but they will not be able to see the rest of your files or anything like that. So that's really important to understand there. All right, if you've been watching this and you notice that you might, not, you might not have a documents and downloads folder over here and they might be gone and you might be asking yourself, why don't I have those folders there? It's probably because you have I, uh, iCloud turned on. So if you have iCloud turned on, you actually, that means that under your account, if you log in under any other Mac, your documents, your downloads, things like that will be actually in the iCloud or in the cloud. So you can access them from everywhere. So they won't be stored under this hierarchy here. And what I want to show you is if you, so again, if you click on Finder, you go up to Go and you click on, instead of, remember how we clicked on um, Computer before? This time you click on iCloud Drive. You'll notice I don't have iCloud Drive set up, but if you did, your documents and all those folders that I just talked about would be listed over here and not over there. They would be listed over here because this is, you'd have them on the iCloud. And that's why you wouldn't be seeing them on the other screen and you'd be seeing them right over here under the iCloud drive. And that means, again, if you have multiple computers, you log in through your account, they're gonna show up, any of these, uh, anything that you see in over here, which I don't have turned on, will show up under all those accounts. That's why it's like that. So, you know, you can turn on the iCloud account. I don't have mine turned on. If you go up to basically system preferences and you go up to Apple ID right here, click on that, and then you go down to iCloud, see right there, make sure you're on iCloud iCloud Drive has to be checked right there. And so if you check that, and I'm not gonna do it, but if you check that, then you'll have a lot of folders and stuff over here. And some of them will be your documents and all that kind of stuff. But I, for, this, for this video, what I wanted to show you is we're gonna go ahead and click up here and click on Go. And then we're gonna click back on Computer. And it's gonna basically, we're gonna go through this hierarchy again. So we're gonna go to Users, My Account, and then you'll see that my folders are stored over here because I don't have the iCloud. It's my, you know, so if I had multiple computers, I wouldn't be able to see my documents and my downloads on the other computers because I don't have it stored that way or I don't have iCloud turned on. So I hope that makes sense. These will be disappeared if iCloud's on and they'll be under the other screen I just showed you, but they won't be here. So that's the one difference that you might see here when we're going through everything and then I hope that makes a little bit of sense to people. All right, the very last thing I wanted to show people again, the public is where, again, if you click on this, you know, it's under my account. I can drop a file in here, others can see it. But realistically, that's gonna be under my account. People can still see that under, and they know it's under my account. But if you want a universal sharing, a place where everyone can just put files and stuff, if you back out of this and you go, uh, you know, not under my account, but you go one level down um, to the shared folder here and you click on it, you can throw you know, files and stuff in here as well, create folders. And then every user that's listed here, again, I only have one, but if there's multiple users could see those as well. So that's gonna be what the shared folder is there. So I hope this helped people and I really just wanted to kind of show the basic setup of the Mac you know, structure and the file structure. So let me know what you think and I'm gonna catch you here in a second and we'll wrap this up. All right, so what did you think? 
Not too bad, huh? So once you understand just the basics of the file and folder structure on the Mac, it's pretty easy to kind of understand where things should go, where you should save documents, what your multiple users can find, um, how the cloud works. It's really easy once you get into it, once you actually look at it from that level. So let me know what you think in the comments. Did this help you at all? I hope it did because, you know, I like to make videos like this to help people. And this is one that, you know, it's really basic, I know, but at the end of the day, a lot of people just never learn the Mac files and folder structure. And they just kind of use it and their files are all over the place, like mine. Um, but if you really do use it, you know, my machine that I don't actually do all my videos on, it's a lot cleaner and I do follow all these principles. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, let me know what you think about it. And uh, if you can help support my channel and click the like button, it's going to really help me out grow the channel. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.